Hey everyone, welcome back to Dead Mall Walking. Today we're checking out Elephant and Castle Shopping Center in some of its final hours, as it's now closed for demolition. Once painted bright pink in the 90s, such a 90s move, it was covered up with blue paint in 2011. This beautiful bronze statue, originally located inside the center, wasn't painted pink to match it, but has faded from its original deep red. Built in 1965, the shopping center is a brutalist icon that holds the dubious honor of being the first covered shopping mall not just in the UK, but in the whole of Europe. Let's check it out, shall we? The center had three floors at one point, but the top floor was converted to a bowling alley and bingo hall in the 80s, I believe, both of which closed in 2019. Unfortunately, they were blocked off when I was filming, so I wasn't able to get up there and check it out. It's worth pointing out that I wasn't the only person wandering around here snapping pictures or taking videos on the final day. You might spot a couple of others in this video. If you were there in the center's final days, please feel free to say hi in the comments below. The rest of this center closed at midnight on the 24th of September 2020 never to open again. It will be replaced by 1,000 new homes, an open-air shopping centre and buildings for UAL's London College of Communication. The problem? Just 35% of the housing and 10% of the new retail space will be classed as affordable. Gentrification strikes again. Wandering around here felt a little like I was intruding on a funeral that I hadn't been invited to. A few retailers pressed on, clearly determined to sell goods until the clock ran out. Although some had already vacated, there were plenty more sadly packing up their wares, many of them with nowhere else to go. At the time of filming, only half of the current tenants had formulated plans for their relocation. The rest can look forward to facing high London rents if they want to try to reopen their businesses elsewhere. Southwark Council pledged an extra £200,000 to help traders affected by the centre's demolition at the beginning of this year, but it remains to be seen whether or not that money will actually get to those who really need it. There's always at least one sad coke vending machine. By all accounts, La Boda Gita, and I hope I'm not butchering that pronunciation too badly, was an extremely popular spot in here, known for its Latin cuisine and rambunctious dance parties. I've always been aware of this centre, but I was never exactly local, even when I lived in London. Still, I never felt unsafe here. Elephant and Castle isn't without crime, but this is far from the danger zone that some critics of the centre and the area as a whole would have you believe. Despite all the sirens that you could hear as I was walking into it. Even though it was as high as 100% in the 90s, Occupancy here has been tailing off over the past few years, despite steady foot traffic. Elephant and Castle was once known as the Piccadilly of the South, but that hasn't been true for a long time. That's not why this place is failing though. Like many dead malls in America, investment into the centre and the area as a whole has been sorely lacking. 
the more dilapidated the mall becomes, and it is dilapidated, the easier it is for the council to make a case for knocking the whole thing down and starting fresh. I don't usually get too political on this channel or on my Instagram, but it's easy to see how that cycle negatively impacts those on lower incomes and results in them being pushed out of the area for the sake of regeneration. The centre's closure is a significant loss for the area's Latinx and black community in particular, with many of its businesses and market stalls owned and operated by people of colour. A mull, mainstay at the centre's Price Busters store that we saw earlier, told Londonist that it used to be a shithole, but now it's a shithole we've turned into a gold mine apparently. So they basically want to kick us out and carry on with their development. Honestly, that was one of the most depressing things about visiting this place. There was a real sense of community spirit here and although you can build structures to be bigger and better, you can't just build that again. Some of the larger chains on the lower floor, like Clark's and Superdrug, were ploughing ahead to the bitter end. Others, like this Peacock's, had already chosen to say their goodbyes and duck out at an earlier date. For fans of dead malls, those red and yellow store closing signs really are impossible to escape. Check out this old Greg's logo from the mid-90s. Any self-respecting Brit will be able to tell you that there have been at least two newer logos introduced since this frontage was last updated. There was a Tesco in here at one point, which was closed for a month due to a mouse infestation. It was closed for good in 2019, and although a co-op opened in September of that year, it left shortly afterwards. The only remaining food shop in here, apart from the market stalls outside, was Iceland. Here's a quick shot inside the former co-op, no longer recognisable as a food store. and a couple of escalators awaiting parts. I think they'll be waiting for a while now. I couldn't believe how huge this sundial restaurant looked. Although I wonder if it just seemed more spacious because all of the tables and equipment were being dismantled and removed. Let's take one of the few working escalators and head back upstairs to the main level. If it's even fair to call it that anymore. This shopping centre is a long way from perfect, but it has tons of character. I took so much raw footage here, which I may upload at a later date, that this ended up being my longest and most ambitious video yet. It felt like I owed the place that much. When the bulldozers roll up, whenever that might be, they're going to be taking a lot of memories down with them. This security guard, 
pulling up his mask as I approached. He was talking to a tenant about the process of handing keys back when the centre closed and where they would be going next. I encountered him a couple of times throughout the day and if he noticed me filming then he was gracious enough to let me carry on without interruption. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed filming here. Be sure to like and subscribe for more and check out my Instagram link below. As London continues its relentless pursuit of gentrification, we're going to be left with a little less of this and a lot more of this. For the last time, goodbye from Elephant and Castle Shopping Centre. You'll be missed.